Praise the name of the Lord. I hope you are well. I want to really thank God for giving us another chance to come and uh, have some time with his word. This is Prayer Cave Youth Church Truth Moment. And I want to take this time and welcome you to this program. I tend to think that the Lord has been uh, speaking to you through the messages that we have been airing through this show. And I really want to appreciate you for your support. Uh, those of you that have been uh, very, very, very consistent in following us and even sharing our messages, we appreciate you and we really thank God because of you. And my encouragement to you this uh, time is that you continue subscribing to this channel in case you have not, and even share these messages with any person, a friend, a family member, or any other person that you feel that they need to hear what the Lord is saying. But I appreciate the support. Thank you so much, subscribers. Thank you so much those that are sharing these messages. It's a blessing to serve you. My name is Samuel Ndichu. I love the Lord. I'm born again. It's a pleasure to share the word of God together with you. And I hope that the Lord is going to minister to you. So before we continue to share the word of God, allow me to make a prayer. And I know the Lord is going to bless you. Our dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you. We want to bless you for this one more time that you have given us, dear Lord, uh, Lord Almighty, this chance even to gather in this space. We appreciate you even for the blessing of life and we thank you for good health and we thank you for everything. Even as we go ahead to share your word, we pray that the Spirit of God is going to minister to us in a very special way, in a way that we can be able to understand that the truth of your word will change and transform our lives in the name of the Lord. And I want to bless you for my viewers. I pray that God, you touch them by your spirit in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, Karim, today, good news. If you read the book of uh, uh, Luke chapter 4, if you read the book of Matthew, uh, you're going to see Isaiah chapter 61. This is part of the anointing that Jesus Christ carried. And I know later in this topic, I'm going to talk about that. But I want to tell you, my brother, my sister, even before I take you to something here, I want you to understand your soul can heal. You and Actually, this is the will of God, that you heal in the soul. It is not just he healing in our physical bodies, but even healing in your soul, in your willpower, healing in your emotions, and healing in your mind. It is something that is that God is so much concerned about. God does not want us to walk with those wounds. Some of these things that wound our souls, we might not be able to run away uh, uh, from them. We might not be able to avoid them. After all, John chapter 16, verses 33, Bible says that in this world, you are going to find trouble. So some of these things can come our way. We might not be able to avoid. But listen, Jesus said, cheer up, I have overcome the world. We can be able to heal. In Jesus, in Christ, there is virtue enough to make our souls heal and recover. That's why the Bible says, Psalm is said, Psalms 147 verse 3, he says that God heals the brokenhearted. God can heal us. God can heal you. It is the will of God that you heal and you recover. That's the will of God. And my prayer is this day, even as you listen to this message, every wound in your heart, every wound in your soul, where you have been crushed by life experiences, where probably you went through a loss, whereby probably you went through um, your own mess, where probably you went through rejection, people scandalized you, and all this, I pray today in the name of Jesus that you'll be able to heal and recover so that you can be able to uh, realize the destiny that God has for your life. Without this healing, you cannot be able to attain that which God has for your life. And it is the will of God, it is the will of God that you heal and recover in your soul. That's the will of God. And my prayer is that the virtual healing of God is going to touch you wherever you are so that you heal and you recover emotionally in your willpower, in your mind, so that you'll be able to accomplish the will and the destiny that God has for you. Allow me to uh, say three things of how a wounded soul can delay or destroy your destiny. This is very important. Number one, how does a wounded soul delay or destroy destiny? Because this is actually the heart of this message. 
a wounded soul can destroy it can delay destiny it can destroy destiny and these scriptures are all over in the bible and probably if i have time in the next episode i will explain more and more look at this number one it affects your decision making after feeding you with the wrong per perception about life a wounded soul it can affect your ability to make decisions after feeding you with the wrong perception or the wrong perspective about something or about someone. That is one of the things that worries me a lot. It feeds you with the wrong perspective about someone or about life. It can also be about God and then it affects your decision making. And I'm here to tell you today, don't make serious decisions about your life when you are going through pain. I know life is about decision. There are times we have to make decisions. There are those circumstances. But I want you to listen kindly. Be very careful when you are in pain. Be very careful when you are going through a wound in your soul. When you carry, you know, this pain in your soul for a long time, it feeds you with the wrong perspective about life. I know you have had people who are very, very negative very negative about everything they don't see anything good probably they have a soul in their wound genesis chapter 13 verses 7 to 11 there is a man a young man here he was not part of abraham's calling his name is lot and lot walked with abraham after Je god called abraham in genesis chapter 12 and he walked with his father he was actually the brother of his father abraham was uh, lot's uh, uncle or something like that and he walked with Abraham. He was not part of the call. He was not part uh, of uh, Abraham's call. Nevertheless, I don't know what Abraham thought and he carried Lot with him. And they, he prospered. Lot prospered out of the blessing of association. He, this relationship blessed Lot so much. He became an owner. He became an employer. If we can talk about it in our modern day language. But if you go to Genesis chapter 13, we are seeing something that is uh, shocking that there is quarrel between the handsmen of Abraham and the handsmen of Lot. And we see Abraham calling Lot and telling this guy, because the whole land is before us, make a decision. If you go to the east, I go to the west. If you go to the north, I go to the south. If you go to the mountains, I go to the valley and the vice versa. And, 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 and I tend to think, this man, we see Lot making a decision. He forgot about this relationship, that it is the one that has actually blessed him and made him the way he was. But he made a decision to part with Abraham. And I ask myself, come as the Bible says that it were the handsmen of Lot and the handsmen of Abraham had a problem. This could have been solved by Lot. It is Lot who actually needed Abraham more than anything. Abraham was his father. Abraham was his covering. But we see a man out of the wrong perspective of life. Probably he was fed with the wrong information by his handmen. The Bible does not say so. I'm just thinking loud. The Bible does not say so. But listen, what is this that affected Lot to make a decision to leave Abraham and went to a place called Zohar? A village that was near Sodom. And you know what happened. Bible says that when he looked, he saw a land that was well watered like the garden of the Lord. You know, called Zoa. You know, a small town. And it was near Sodom. And you know what happened later. Let me tell you. I tend to think, I tend to believe. A Lot was not only making a decision here. He had a wound in the soul. Something was not right between in him up uh, between his relationship with his father abraham so we see lot living with a with a wound in his soul you know he almost destroyed a serious relationship that covered him some of us we have seen men and women we have seen young people destroying very serious relationships because somebody said something about someone you are not sure i have seen people who have gotten out of very serious relationship even people quitting churches out of malice and gossips and all that, they destroyed the relationship that covered them. They destroyed the relationship that blessed them. And they made a decision because of pain in the soul. 
this is what lot did and many other examples that probably if i have time i'll talk about so lot left i pray that you will take care of your relationships those people that matter to you your spouse your friends they are those good friends they are those parents they are very important yes in one way or the other they can hurt you in one way or the other they can offend you luke 17 verse 1 it is impossible for offending for offense not to come some of these people can offend us but listen there is a way to recover and restore there is a way to reconcile there is a way to forgive and move on don't destroy you know uh serious you know relationships in your life out of a of the pain in your soul there is a way to heal and recover there is a way to protect these relationships number two one of the other things that can just delay or destroy your destiny about a wounded soul is that you carry pain that can lead to death pain that pain that, that bitterness some people call it it's, it's a it's a bitterness but it's, it's a pain it is pain in your emotion and sometimes it it can it can it can destroy you it can even interfere with your physical health this is this if you read the book of genesis chapter 4 verses 8 there is a man called uh uh, uh cain cain was so offended by god when god received the, the 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 sacrifice of his brother abel and did not receive his sacrifice Cain felt a lot of pain. A lot of pain. In fact, if you read from verses 3 verses all the way to verse 8 there, you see even God warning Cain and telling him, Cain, do you know there is sin that is crouching at your door and you need to master it? This warning was as a result of something that was happening in his soul. And God was worried that something is about to happen in the life of Cain. He was contemplating to kill his brother out of that pain because God did not receive his sacrifice. Have you seen people who are killing and, 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 you know, and destroying people because they are better than them? Have we seen people going to the witchcraft to you know, perform witchcraft and sorcery and all that? Have we seen that? Out of that pain, it can lead to death. That is how actually Cain killed his brother. Take care of that pain in your heart about somebody who did something against you. If that pain is carried for long, it can destroy people. It can actually kill people. In this era, people are cooking their spouses and their children. Out of that pain, let me tell you, it's very dangerous. I don't want to talk about Saul uh, and David. I don't want to talk about that because it could take us a long time. But listen, that pain is very, very dangerous. It needs to be dealt with. You cannot assume it. God is there. Psalms 147 verse 3. I'll keep repeating this. God heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. That pain can, can be overcome. Allow me to talk about the last one here. That can delay or destroy your destiny. When it comes to a wounded soul, it makes you stay in a self-made prison. This is the story of John the Baptist. You can read Matthew chapter 11 verses 1 all the way to verse 6. John the Baptist was so offended by the fact that Jesus was still healing people. More than this physical prison, John was in a self-made prison. Even Jesus is saying, blessed is the man. Because what John did, he sent two disciples to go and check out whether Jesus is still doing crusades and all that. Because probably he thought, if Jesus is still doing crusades and all that, when I'm in prison, probably he doesn't care about me. He sent a very serious question. Go and ask Jesus, is he the Messiah or should we expect another one? And Jesus came, took the two disciples of John, went, took them to a crusade, performed miracles, healed the sick, and he told them, go and tell John the Baptist what you have seen. But blessed is the person who is not offended of me. What was that? It indicated that John, somewhere, somewhere, along the way, he put himself into a prison. Forget about the physical one. He was so offended because offense is a self-made prison. It is a self-made. I am not saying it is a good feeling. I am not saying that people have a right to offend you. I am not ignoring the magnitude of how people can walk over you and make you offended. I'm not ignoring that. I have gone through it and I tend to think probably at some point. But listen, it is not unto us to take that offense. 
God does not want us to take in that offense. No. Because when you take in that offense, you put yourself in a prison. And even Jesus, I don't know whether he could help this man in that state. He was so offended. Three things that can actually delay or destroy your destiny. Number one, this wounded soul, it affects your decision making because it affects the mind. Number two, it makes you to carry a pain in your heart. Your emotions are so wounded. Number three, it puts you in a self-made prison. And I'll talk about this more. But the good news is, we can deal with this pain. God is actually ready to heal us. If you read the book of Isaiah 53, the Bible talks about uh, Jesus, how he will come and he was crushed for our iniquities. He was chastised for our peace. God wants you to enjoy peace in your soul. He doesn't like you when you are carrying bitterness and grudges and unforgiveness and people in your heart, regardless of what they did to you. At some point, God wants your soul to prosper. And this is the will of God. My prayer is that the Lord will heal your heart and make you recover from all this pain so that you can go faster to the uh, destiny that God has kept ahead of you. In the name of Jesus, may every pain in your soul be healed so that you run the race that is already marked for you. May the Lord God bless you. See you in the next episode. This is Prayer Cave Youth Church, the truth moment. Don't touch that dial. God bless you. Thank you.